Hello, welcome. If you saw the last video, I compared Leica to Lumix. But what about Sigma? In today's video, we're going to look in particular at the Sigma 85mm f1.4 DGDN art lens. But first, let's just quickly cover how I think it compares to both Leica and Lumix. Matt here from MrLeica.com. For me, Sigma sits right in the middle. So you've got plastic fantastic Lumix lenses at one end of the scale. Nice optics, very plastic feeling. Then at the other end of the scale, you've got your ultimate optical quality, which is your Leica Apo lenses. Then right in the middle, I think, is where Sigma DGDN lenses fit. So they have a metal barrel and have a much better feel of build quality compared to Lumix lenses and they are much more affordable than Leica lenses. But what about if we look in particular at the Sigma Art 85mm f1.4. Last week I was teaching in Spain. My student Hide kindly lent me his Sigma Art 85 1.4 lens for me to try out for one of our model shoots. So this video will give you a quick spec rundown of everything you need to know about the lens hopefully. And then I'll show you example photos during my model shoot and we'll round it up by what other options do you have instead of this if you prefer Leica lenses. Okay, let's first look at the lens spec. The first thing we probably want to cover is if you're new to Sigma lenses, there is an old version and a new version of the 85 1.4. The old version is called a DGHSM art lens and the new version is called a DGDN art lens. The difference is well, huge. <laughs> Here they are side by side, thanks to Christopher Foss video, and I'll link that at the end. And the new version is basically almost half the size of the old version, and it's been shown to be both sharper and with less chromatic aberration when shot wide open. So well done Sigma engineers, the new version is better than the old version, and for everybody that loves smaller lenses, this is a big tick in the box. Sigma art lenses are bigger than Sigma contemporary lenses, which are their slower F2 lenses, and they have more buttons than the F2 versions. The new version of the 85 and 1.4 is a metal and glass build with a rubber focus ring. The new Sigma 85 mm lens, similar to other Sigma lenses, has the mechanical aperture ring with a third stop increment clicks and you can press a button to both de-click it and lock the aperture ring. Uh, I'll come on to this in a second when we get to the photos. The optical formula of this lens is 15 elements in 11 groups and it has 11 rounded aperture blades which gives you really nice smooth bokeh balls and out of focus areas. To see how good the bokeh qualities are from this lens here's me doing a video with the Leica SL with me slowly stopping down the lens and you can see the bokeh still remains pretty round throughout even as you stop down as much as I think it's probably down to around f8 by the end of this video so yeah if you like round bokeh balls this lens will be for you sorry for the shake I didn't have a steady tripod with me as mentioned it is smaller than the previous version the new lens has got a 77 mil filter thread where the old one had a 86 mil filter thread it's also lighter than the old version weighing 630 grams compared to 1.13 kilos so 22 ounces if you're in the us the new lens is 26 percent shorter than the old version as with the Leica lenses and lumix lenses in the last video the sigma lens doesn't have built-in image stabilization but it does give you autofocus and weather sealing. A lens hood is included but I didn't use the lens hood for any photos in this video and also that helps keep the lens smaller. All portraits shared in this video were shot with a 47 megapixel Leica SL2. If you shoot the lens at the minimum focus distance it's not that sharp in the center and as you start to move your subject further away from the lens it does get sharper. Shoot to get normal distances for portrait headshots as you can see here the sharpness is more than good enough and all these photos you're seeing here are shot wide open at f1.4. If you see the flare that's me shooting towards the sun or perhaps through foliage to give some subject background separation. As you can see it gives a really nice portrait lens with the soft background. Here is me shooting again with available light but this time using the shadow from some fencing. And <laughs> this is part of the workshop so here's a behind the scenes of Hide doing the photos with his camera too. A big shout out to Hide, one of my patrons, and a big thanks to all my patrons who support me, which help me make these videos. Okay, this is me shooting F16. It wasn't on purpose. I, it was when I first started using the lens and I realized that I was shooting at a tenth of a second and then noticed I was at F16. Pretty nice photos considering it was F16. <laughs> this was later on in the shoot. It was the girl's 29th birthday the next day. So she wanted to do some more, let's say, risque pictures 
to celebrate her 29th birthday. So this lens is perfect for female portraits because you have the softness and the shallow depth of field, which give really nice rendering and I think really suit this type of shot. Um, again, shooting through foliage to give you the depth and shooting towards the sun for the flare effect. You can see nice bokeh and subject background separation and the halo lighting from the available light. So those are the photos I managed to achieve for my first couple of hours of using this lens. First impressions, really nice lens for shallow depth of field, female portraits in particular, and it will also be really useful if you shoot in very low light situations when you need an f1.4 aperture. It's called a portrait lens for a reason, and so I think if you're a portrait photographer, it kind of makes sense to use a fast lens. The problem is, what if you shoot with Leica lenses? So Leica don't actually offer an 8 to 1.4, but they do offer either a 90 f2 or a 91.5. There is a slight difference in price between the Sigma lens and the Leica offerings. So let's take a look at the price. If you're in the US, you can pick up the Sigma 85 1.4 DGDN lens for $1,200, which is around £1,000. If you're happy to buy a used lens, you can pick up the new version for around £800, the old version, the bigger version for around £600. So is that the best bang for the buck if you need a fast, short telephoto portrait lens? Well, actually, no. You could pick up the Lumix S 85mm 1.8 for less than $500, which is kind of mind-blowing when you compare that to the price of the Leica lenses. You've got the 75mm Leica Noctilux f1.25, where you've got the 90mm Leica Summer Lux f1.5, and not forgetting the Leica Apo Summicron SL 90F2. Is this now my favourite portrait lens? I would say no. I'm still a sucker for metal and glass vintage lenses. And so I think my favourite for rendering is still the Leica Summicron 90mm F2 pre spherical M lens. Stay tuned because I have got some new old vintage lenses coming to the channel very soon. And I'm really excited about those. Those are the lenses that really do put a smile on my face. If you want to see a real pixel peeping side by side test, check out this video by Christopher Frost. It's a really good comparison between the old Sigma 85mm and the new Sigma 85mm.